allora eh, riprendiamo quest'ultima parte del workshop con tre interventi di, eh, di partner che hanno già avuto esperienza quindi di collaborazione eh, fra artisti e musei eh, e museo e, il primo intervento è questo di eh, Bambi Perpens e Christine Blois e poi seguirà l'intervento delle colleghe, loro sono del Museo dell'Africa Centrale di Terbure, ma già le conoscete quasi tutti, e poi seguirà l'intervento delle colleghe di Cambridge e chiuderemo con l'intervento di un giovane curatore eh, che sta facendo uno stage qui presso di noi, eh, Emanuele Rinaldo Meschini, di cui avete visto un intervento nella, nella nostra, nei nostri sottoportici. E poi ci, saranno, cioè la, ci sarà la possibilità di eh, porre domande, interventi, questioni, qualsiasi cosa. Allora lascio subito la parola alle, alle due colleghe che ringrazio molto per aver accettato di partecipare anche all'ultimo a, a questa nostra tavola rotonda. Ok, so we've uh, hosted, uh, we've had uh, three artists in residence uh, thus far um, and actually the idea um, came uh, from outside the museum Um, it was a proposition by Professor Luham Laga, uh, who is professor in architecture at uh, Kent University. And so he set up uh, the first uh, artist in residence scheme uh, with uh, my colleague Sabine Cornelis, who at the time was the head of the Department of Colonial History, which in the meantime has become uh, the um, History and Politics uh, section. And our first artists in residence were Uh, Sami Balocci and uh, Patrick Mudekerezza, uh, both uh, artists from Lubumbashi. Um, um, so, um, at the time, um, they were not very well known, uh, but in the meantime, uh, Sami Balocci, uh, uh, for instance, um, is now uh, represented at the Biennale uh, in Venice, both uh, in the international circuit uh, and in the Belgian uh, pavilion. Uh, the Belgian pavilion uh, that was actually constructed by King Leopold II, who also uh, created the Museum in Tervuren, and that uh, was the reason why uh, the uh, curator uh, of the Belgian pavilion this year uh, uh, decided to devote uh, the exhibition uh, uh, to the colonial past. Uh, so some 10 uh, artists, um, including some biology, um, did research uh, uh, in our museum uh, as preparation uh, for uh, that uh, exhibition. Anyone, one more about Patrick? Uh, Patrick is a writer. He's <laughs> a writer and uh, he works in uh, Lubumbashi uh, with the group Pisha. So the, 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 the Pisha, the name is Pisha, uh, called um, uh, Images, I think, in uh, uh, Swahili. And uh, uh, Patrick uh, works in the Bombashi and also in uh, South Africa. Um, so basically, uh, what we did was um, that we gave them a chance uh, to produce uh, our archives uh, and our collections and that uh, they could uh, choose freely um, what objects uh, or documents to work uh, upon. And um, they both uh, decided uh, to work uh, upon objects and documents uh, that pertain to the creation uh, of the Congo Free State. And so, uh, in that sense, uh, uh, to the origin of the museum as an institution. Um, and um, uh, Christine, um, as our museologist, was responsible then for uh, uh, creating the exhibition based uh, upon uh, Uh, the work that uh, 
they did. Maybe, yeah. Uh, that's a work in progress. Then the first uh, exhibition uh, was in Tervuren, in a museum, African museum, and the second uh, time is in Lubumbashi in uh, 2013. Um, in Tervuren, the, this work is presented in three parts. Uh, the first part is uh, retracing uh, Charles Le Maire expe uh, expedition. It's a work uh, from uh, Sani. It's a work uh, to show the, the picture uh, 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 from our archive and the picture now uh, in uh, Katanga. No, it's the same place and the same. Um, oh, um, yes. It's a diptych, it's the, the, the proposition is a diptych between before and, and now. Um, the second part, the Art of Congo, uh, it's a work uh, from uh, Patrick Modegaretza, and uh, he decided to recre recreation uh, something about uh, from, from a statue, um, um, from a colonial statue. Um, and uh, decide to speak about this statue. And the third, uh, but we, we, we show you the, the image, and, and the third uh, part is uh, uh, about the, the treaties, the treaties of um, uh, territories, the, the, the treaties of territories uh, from Congo. And uh, uh, Patrick uh, Modegaza revisiting a series of treaties seen it uh, between European agent and dignitaries of the Lower Congo in the, the late uh, 19th century. And uh, uh, he worked about the cross, because the treaties, the, the, the signature from the, the chief of Congo is a cross. Um, so, um, basically, um, Sami Baloche, together with one of my colleagues, Martin Kutenye, who's a historian, so they went uh, to uh, Katanga um, to retrace the steps of uh, Charles Le Maire's exhibition at the end of the 19th century. Um, and they talked to local people uh, to see what uh, memories there were still uh, were there um, pertaining to that um, exhibition. Um, and so um, he made... Um, uh, collages basically uh, of uh, aquarelles that were taken by the artist that uh, accompanied uh, the exhibition uh, with photographs uh, from uh, our collection. So this is an image um, of the exhibition with, um, as Christine said, diptychs. So on the left-hand side, a historical photograph of uh, Mukanda Bantu, who was uh, the son uh, of one of the most powerful um, men uh, in the region at the time, um, who was killed uh, during the exhibition. And then on the right-hand side, the photos are not very clear, uh, but with a clear resemblance, um, his uh, grandson. And as a matter of fact, apparently when um, the grandson's wife uh, first saw the image of his grandfather. Uh, she was confused because she thought that they were one and the same person because uh, the resemblance uh, is so strong. So um, not only is, uh, are these grandfather and grandson, but uh, in addition, the photographs uh, have been taken in exactly the same spot. Um, so this is a photograph uh, of the mission. Uh, now, uh, uh, Patrick worked on a hybrid uh, sculpture, um, so uh, it is a work by a, a Belgian artist, uh, Auguste de Wever, whereas the two uh, um, trunks, the ivory trunks, um, are actually made by uh, a Congolese artist uh, about whom uh, nothing is known, and that is precisely what intrigued him, i.e. the fact that the identity of uh, the um, Belgian artist is known, whereas uh, the Congolese artist or artists uh, is uh, uh, anonymous. Um, if you are interested by the exhibition, the whole exhibition uh, uh, is on the website. Uh, uh, the address of the web is uh, just uh, there. And uh, uh, you can visit the exhibition uh, uh, on the web. 
uh, all the, the, the thing and the, the, the works are there. So what uh, he basically did was uh, to create a, a, a cartoon, as it were, which is based upon the images uh, that you see here on the sculpt uh, uh, trunks. And then, uh, as Christine said, um, he also worked on the treaties, uh, which were signed by the paramount chiefs uh, at a time with a cross, for the obvious reason uh, that they were illiterate. Um, and because um, these people uh, lived uh, in a culture in which um, uh, orality dominated, uh, so he had them slammed, uh, the, uh, the text of these uh, treaties, um, by uh, two, uh, two musicians of Congolese descent, uh, Alim Bosuma and uh, Pichi Womba uh, Konga. Um, so on the right hand side, well, on my Yes, on your right-hand side as well. Uh, this is uh, um, the, uh, one of the original treaties. And then on the left-hand side, um, there is the translation. Um, unfortunately, um, we do not have uh, the sounds. And I'm not sure, are they on yes, the website? On the website, Sorry. yes. All the, the treaties in Islam, like the, the rap uh, uh, version uh, was, uh, uh, is on the, the website. <coughs> And then, uh, as Christine already mentioned, so uh, the exhibition moved uh, to Lubumbashi, uh, which is the capital uh, of Katanga, where the um, uh, Charles Le Maire uh, expedition took place uh, in 2013. So, um, obviously, um, the reception uh, of the ex uh, exhibition uh, in, in, in Lubumbashi was uh, quite different from the way that uh, it was received um, uh, in Tervuren. Um, there was a lot more interest in the exhibition uh, in Lubumbashi, I dare say, than there was uh, in Tervuren. Um, um, for the obvious uh, reason um, that this um, uh, exhibition uh, still is part uh, of, um, of uh, the local uh, memory, uh, so that it speaks a lot more to the inhabitants uh, of uh, Lubumbashi than uh, it spoke to uh, most of the visitors uh, who uh, came to uh, see the exhibition interview. And that's the idea that um Artist in residence is also a work in progress. Then the, the version in Italian is so different from the version of Lubumbashi, and maybe another version after. We we think that it's very important to 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 make the the, the work in progress uh, uh, between uh, uh, between Africa and Europe. For example, the statue here. Yeah. It's not possible to, to, to make the, the statue to, to tra traveling, and uh, we uh, decided to redraw the statue on the wall uh, of the place of exhibition. Then. And then um, our next uh, artist uh, in residence, who just uh, left us uh, two months ago, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, was uh, Iriar was uh, Izamba. So whereas uh, Patrick and Sami decided to work, uh, say, on, the arch uh, on arch archives and objects that were related to the creation of the Congo Free State and so had a direct link with the creation of the museum, uh, Iviari Zamba um, decided to work uh, on our post-colonial uh, archives uh, in the uh, um, history and politics uh, section. Um, I uh, first came across uh, uh, his work when I visited Kinshasa in 2009, when I saw one of the seats um, that he had created, um, ex um, exhibited uh, in the academy uh, in Kinshasa. And then uh, subsequently um, uh, we showed um, this seat, um, named after the second president uh, uh, of uh, the Congo, Mobutu, uh, in the exhibition uh, on, uh, uh, at the occasion of uh, Congolese independence that I uh, curated in 2010, uh, and we subsequently pur uh, purchased it. 
Um, and at the time, he already said that um, his idea was uh, to create a whole set of seed uh, with reference to the most uh, important uh, Congolese uh, post-colonial uh, leaders. Um, and um, it took some time, but um, he finally came to the museum uh, uh, in 2014 um, for the preparation um, of um, his uh, artistic work. And then, as I said, he uh, left uh, only a few months ago um, uh, after having created uh, four uh, more uh, seats, um, and um, which are on display right now, uh, not in the museum, which is obviously closed, but uh, in the Fine Arts Centre in Brussels, uh, uh, where the museum uh, has a room during uh, the closure. And uh, actually, um, these seats uh, he found in the caves uh, of uh, the Fine uh, Arts Centre, um, and he used those to create um, these political uh, uh, seats. Uh, which is very much the way that uh, he worked uh, in uh, Kinshasa as well, and the way that a lot of uh, Congolese artists work, i.e. with uh, material that they recuperate uh, in the street uh, or anywhere else. Um, so uh, here um, are the uh, four um, seats um, uh, together. Um, a game of thrones indeed, uh, in, in, in the sense that um, he does consider them uh, a thrones uh, uh, so much uh, um, that uh, he always uh, felt very uncomfortable when uh, uh, people uh, want uh, to sit upon them. Um, and uh, they refer to, the, uh, to four uh, of the most prominent political leaders um, uh, in the Congo uh, after independence. Uh, three presidents and one uh, prime minister, um, and you know who the prime minister is uh, by his name because uh, in order to become uh, president of the Congo, apparently you either have to be called uh, Joseph or Desiré or both. Uh, so there's Joseph Kasavubu, Joseph Desiré Mobutu, Laurent Desiré Kabila, and now the current president who is called Joseph Kabila. Uh, for whom uh, Ilya has not created a seat yet, uh, although um, he thought of doing so, but I wanted to, cre to create a little one, uh, so uh, one which is remarkably smaller uh, than the other ones, and that says something of uh, the esteem uh, in which uh, the current president uh, is held uh, by uh, Ilya and uh, by uh, most uh, um, uh, Kingwa, actually. Um, and as you can see, um, so uh, all the seats are a combination of uh, photographs uh, of the leaders that uh, he found in our archives uh, with uh, press articles again uh, from our archives which talk precisely about uh, political events uh, related uh, to them. Um, that, that's a, a picture uh, um, of the work uh, in progress uh, between the, the, the uh, artisan who makes the, the, the chair and the uh, a big discussion about the archive, about the article, about the, the historical of, of Congo. It's very interesting. And now maybe the, the third part is... Yes. Of, uh, yes, um, because uh, as you probably noticed, we had some problem uh, with uh, the presentation. So, um, unfortunately, we, can, we can't show you uh, the uh, images that are the starting point for um, our next artist in residence scheme. Uh, so, this time we have decided um, that we would like. Uh, um, to have one or more artists working upon two uh, rooms uh, in the museum that are very emblematic. Um, first, is, uh, first is what, uh, until the uh, closure of the museum, was uh, the major entrance, which is a, a, a huge rotunda with an enormous cupola. Uh, and it's almost uh, like entering a cathedral, uh, and as a matter of fact, uh, it, it could be said that the museum was curated by Leopold II as a kind of cathedral um, toward himself uh, and the pioneers uh, who conquered the Congo for him. Uh, so what we would like to end, um, 
uh, what is also uh, very striking and, and very sh shocking for a lot of visitors when they first uh, enter this place uh, are massive uh, gold uh, golden sculptures, um, uh, one of which uh, represents, for instance, virgins bringing civilization to the Congo, Another one, um, which especially younger people uh, find uh, shocking, is of an Arab slave trader who is crushing a Congolese uh, man beneath uh, his feet while the man uh, tries to protect his wife. Um, now, um, the problem is that uh, these statues uh, are protected monuments, um, so uh, unfortunately uh, they have to stay even after the reopening. Uh, with uh, all the signs underneath about uh, uh, Belgium bringing civilization to the Congo, etc. Uh, so we would like to um, invite um, uh, an African, uh, one or more uh, African uh, artists, uh, possibly uh, Congolese artists, uh, to think of, of a way um, of actually uh, introducing a, 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 um, an artistic work as a counterbalance uh, to uh, so that uh, visitors um, get a different idea when they uh, enter this space. And the other uh, emblematic space uh, in the museum is the um, memorial room, uh, where there is a plaque with the name of uh, all the Belgian uh, military men uh, who lost their lives uh, in the Congo uh, before 1908, so at the time that it was still the private pro property of Leopold II. And there is no mention at all of the many uh, uh, more Congolese uh, who died uh, often uh, in uh, very uh, horrific circumstances uh, during that same period. And that plaque, again, is protected, so uh, it has to remain uh, after the reopening. And there again, uh, we, uh, we are thinking of working together with uh, an African artist, uh, possibly Congolese, to see how there too we can introduce a counterweight um, that uh, will allow uh, visitors uh, in the first uh, uh, instance uh, to, re to be reminded perhaps of, 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 of the violence that created both uh, the Congo Free State uh, and the museum um, and that will allow uh, uh, them uh, to remember indeed uh, the thousands if not uh, millions of Congolese um, who lost their lives uh, during that period. Um, and perhaps um, make it a kind of a memorial uh, for all victims uh, of the colonization of the Congo, but also of the two um, Belgian protectorates, uh, Rwanda and uh, Burundi, um, because the majority of our collections uh, come uh, from these three countries. And in addition, um, they also um, constitute uh, three of the most important diasporas uh, in Belgium uh, nowadays. Um, and that's about it. Unless you still want to add something. Just, just one word. Uh, um, uh, the, 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 the idea with the third uh, experiences uh, in artists in residence is, is to work not uh, with a special collection, but with building. Because we think that building is one of the most important uh, uh, part of the collection of the Tavern, because the, the, the wall, the walls uh, shows show the, 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 the history, and uh, we think that's important to work with the building. Thanks. Yeah. It's a... okay. Thanks very much. Grazie a Bambi e a Cristina, eh, sembra che gli artisti siano molto interessati alle serie, alle <ride> e, e adesso invito eh, le due colleghe di Cambridge, eh, Ali Clark e eh, Anita Hurl. Thank you very much. Now, should I call my... Okay, first of all, I'd just very much like to thank um, our hosts here um, at the Figurini for um, inviting us. 
And what we're, keep, we're going to do today is give a very brief overview of a few collaborative projects that we've done with contemporary artists at the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology at the University of Cambridge. I'm going to talk very briefly um, about an exhibition, an experimental exhibition that we did called Assembling Bodies, Art, Science, and Imagination. And my colleague Ellie Clark is going to talk about the work of contemporary artists in the major research project, Pacific Presences, which is currently um, at the museum. So, assembling, I need to click to make it come forward. There, okay. Assembling bodies brought together a remarkable range of distinctive objects, including the earliest stone tools used by human ancestors, classical sculptures, medieval manuscripts, anatomical drawings, scientific instruments, um, Crick and Watson's model of the DNA, and, assembly, and ancestral figures from the Pacific, South African body maps, and kinetic art. It started with an assembly of bodies here, so this is the introductory section. The juxtaposition of a broad range of extraordinary materials provided insights into different ways that bodies are created, understood, and transformed, while providing um, information about linkages, historical and contemporary linkages, between develops in arts, science, and um, social and biological science. It also drew attention to the political implications of the way that different kinds of bodies are known and regulated. The point that particular bodies are defined and shaped by various forms of legislation was highlighted by a range of legal documents that framed the introductory section. The aim of assembling bodies was to reveal and challenge preconceived notions of the human body by exploring different ways that bodies are imagined, understood, and composed in the arts, social, and biomedical sciences. Central to the success of the exhibition, was a partnership co-developed with Kinetica in the early planning stages. Five kinetic sculptures by artists Jim Bond, Diane Harris, Tim Lewis, and Michael Marquette were distributed throughout the gallery, enchanting visitors and stimulating them to act with and move through the displays. The inclusion of kinetic art provided a special opportunity for the exhibition team to work through and present complex conceptual ideas. The collaboration with Kinetica was part of the research process on which the exhibition was based. A combination of curatorial and artistic insights and practices that actively engaged with abstract ideas, revealing and mediating between different ways of, doing the of knowing the body. During the process of developing the exhibition, the notion of assembly emerged as a key theoretical concept, as well as a critical curatorial technique. Drawing on the extraordinary range of diverse and rich materials, the exhibition itself was constructed through an intensive process of assembly, reflection, and reassembly. The focus was not simply on the objects that were displayed, but on the various technologies that make different kinds of bodies visible. The non-linear arrangement of the exhibition and the kinetic sculptures directly address the central puzzle of how heterogeneous and hybrid bodies are composed. So this is the entrance where we have um, Jim Bond did two um, kinetic artworks for us. The first one here really emphasized the process of putting something together, of creating something new from component parts. So as the visitor walked into the exhibition, this body would be taken apart and put um, together again by these telescopic arms. Atomized evoked the idea that knowledge about the body is created by the different practices through which it is classified, taken apart, and reassembled. A second sculpture by Bond, Anamorphic Man, over five meters in length, composed of fragments of the body suspended from the ceiling in the central area of the exhibition. Apparently abstract pieces of twisted wire converged into the body's form um, from one perspective within the gallery. So from one, so it sort of was trying to evoke the idea that the viewer's perspective itself helped to, helped to put together or to create what the body was. 
and these two different sculptures um, require different kinds of engagements from the visitors. So with the first one, the visitors um, stood sits, was still, and saw the body taken apart and put together. But this one actually required you to move around the gallery to perceive the shifting relationships between parts and holes. Technologies that modify and extend the body have a tangible transformative effect, both conceptually and material. This was shown by Diane Harris's Head of the Blue Chip, which was in a section about extending the body alongside different kinds of prosthetic devices, medical transplants, um, etc. And here, the bust of an interactive cyborg looked outwards with a hyper-realist video eye, while a surveillance camera implanted in the second eye recorded all that passed in front of it. The blue chip's brain reflected what it was seeing on one side and revealed what it was thinking on the other side. This arresting sculpture mimicked and suggested future human developments over the infiltration of new technologies while evoking the silent and watchful gaze of our surveillance state. Overall, the kinetic art that punctuated the gallery highlighted the body in motion and created a dynamic environment that accentuated the theme of assembly. Instruments used to measure and classify the body were juxtaposed with Tim Lewis's The Mechanic, um, there we go. showing the movement of identical human beings running endlessly around a wheel reminiscence of the instantaneous photography techniques pioneered by Mybridge in the late 19th century to study bodily emotions. The mechanic explored notions of automation and perception and made explicit the link between anatomy and physiology. Michael Marquette's box theremin stimulated the human voice box and encouraged visitors to explore aspects of the body through their own sensory capacities. Visitors were able to create speech sounds by moving their hands through the circuit generated by two high-frequency oscillators. Complementing sounding bodies, a display on osculation, the display showed that the body may be experienced and understood as a dynamic soundscape, with the voice extending the body beyond its physical form. Other artists also um, worked with us. Uh, this. Um, was an extremely popular display with ceramic hugs produced by artist Body Kempsky. Kempsky's sculptural works challenged the domination of sight by more fully engaging the body's sense of touch through physical interactions with the objects she created. These sculptural hugs were made for and by the embrace. The artist used her own body to cast the space of the hug. She applied Merle Ponty's premise that what is given is not the thing on its own, but the experience of the thing. Bonnie captured the embrace as cast hugs that engaged the body's sense of touch as a way to merge the body as subject with its sculptural objects. While not all of the visitors engaged with the philosophy, a remarkable number of people engaged with the hugs. And there wasn't a time when I walked through the gallery that there weren't people in the corner, you know, embracing these hugs. In fact, they were so popular that a student group at the university decided to do a whole performance around the hugs, which about 100 people came to as they went around the gallery, passing around the hugs and doing a dance which they made specially for the occasion. Um, we also used artists as a way of, um, to contribute to the exhibition in different ways. In this, uh, in, with this particular triptych, Sukiyaki Kirahari, um, entitled Fanafini in the Manner of a Woman, provided an opportunity to sort of use it as a riposte to the regimes of power that were illuminated by other areas of the display. So this was quite central um, in an exhibition that was in a, in, a, in a section that was about displaying, about classifying and measuring the body. And I won't read it up, I think you can see it there, what she's, what she's doing, how she's challenging different kinds of ideas of classification that um, categorize people in particular kinds of ways. And Yuki herself is a Fanafini, known as uh, third gender um, in Samoa. 
The central and the last section I'll talk about of the exhibition focused on multiple bodies and again brought it back to the politics of the body. These body maps were originally made in 2003 as part of a project documenting the life of women with HIV AIDS in South Africa who successfully fought for access to antiviral um, therapies. And these women's bodies may be viewed in relation to medical science, to religious belief, or as an outcome of moral pollution. The paintings mark the body with individual histories. The shadowy forms of people who supported the women hover behind them, showing how the body is also defined by its relations with others. Now, there are many, many different things that were shown in this complex exhibition, but I'm just going to end with a little polemic or something for us to think about. Oh, I won't show that one. And this was in a section about distributed bodies. This particular um, sculpture was created by the imagination of Professor Marilyn Strathern, who's well known um, for her work in Melanesia and on gender. Um, and it was realized by both museum staff and the students that we have who come to, to, um, to the museum to um, work with us. It's composed of an assortment of billum bags from various locations in Papua New Guinea. Visitors might suppose that the billum tree or billum body was an indigenous form, but instead it's an anthropological attempt to demonstrate abstract ideas about gender and distributed personhoods. Indigenous artifacts such as billum in PNG show the kind of materials on which anthropologists build their knowledge. The body is known by its capacity to produce and reproduce. It can grow things within, can bring forth, can reproduce itself in others, and in villains are often associated with female project productivity, they're used for carrying babies, and they're often associated symbolically with the womb. So I just want to end with this object and ask this, which, you know, what is this? I mean, this object in itself, I think, really challenges our distinction between art and artifact, but it also challenges um, and ask questions about the different roles of curators, artists, and anthropologists which come together in this particular object. Thank residencies and um, what often links them all particularly at the Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology in Cambridge um, is a desire to deepen and complicate existing cultural understandings of a specific place or a specific peoples. And many of these interventions that we've had at the museums have emerged um, from a need to really question museum displays and how people or place are represented through them. So the project that I work on at the museum is called Pacific Presences. Um, it's a European Research Council funded project. Um, and whilst predominantly it's um, researchers working on the project, we also have an artist in residence. And she's really there to kind of think about um, how we look at collections in a different way to, um, for instance, how myself and my colleagues might research the collections themselves. So this film that I'll show you in a minute um, is her first project um, in Pacific Presences, and it's a film called No. Um, Pacific Presences works with a number of partner museums across Europe, one of which is the Volkerkunde in Leiden. And um, Alana Jelinek, who is the artist who produced this film, decided to work with people from Dutch, Indonesian, and Papuan backgrounds to talk about the collections in the Volkerkunde in Leiden. Um, really, the film and the project was supposed to be about um, stories around objects and different ideas of knowledge, um, objects that might be familiar to the people who were being asked to engage with them, or objects that might be unfamiliar. And the participants um, that she filmed were asked to pick some objects themselves, 
that they might want to talk about from the stores or in library, or they could bring in objects from home. And Alana and the curator Wani at Leiden also picked some objects that they wanted the people to talk about. So the film shows um, Dutch, Indonesian, and Papuan people who all live in the Netherlands talking about these objects. But Alana made the decision to, to just film people's hands holding the objects. And that was to make the, the people who were being filmed feel more comfortable um, and safe, saying what they wanted to say about the objects but it also challenges um, the assumptions of the audience and really kind of thinks about um, what we're really looking about when we're watching a film. And it, it's supposed to really make you concentrate on not just the object, but what you're, what you're hearing and the stories that are being told. Um, so what Alana had really wanted to do um, was see what ideas of knowledge was come out and her... Um, what she thought would happen was that um, the dialogue would be divided into the colonizer and the colonized. So she thought that um, the colonized would be able to talk quite freely and knowledgeably about um, all of the cultures and all of the objects that they were handling. Rather, she thought that the colonizer um, would only be able to talk about their own cultural objects and wouldn't have much knowledge about um, the other people's objects. In fact, what she found through the filming process was um, a real disparity of knowledge and that it was much more complex. The Dutch people sometimes knew nothing about some of the objects that were typically seen as being Dutch um, and more about the Papuan and Javanese objects. And some of the Papuan people knew um, very little about the Javanese and Dutch objects except those that they might have adopted into their own culture or had equivalents of in that culture. So. In the end, for myself and my colleagues who work on the project, um, the film can really be seen as um, not just one thing, but many. It really reveals the complexities of both collections and libraries and the histories that these objects are really tied into. And the film that I'm going to show you is um, it's the first edit. The film has been shown for the first time in Leiden last week, and um, so hopefully when we have the more of a discussion, Wayne might actually be able to talk about the reception of the film and how the Papuan communities and the Dutch communities in Leiden um, received it. But this film might change. Alana's going to do a final edit based on the feedback that she gets from these people. So I'll just show you a brief um, bit of the film now. Okay, if I can get the mouse to work. It's, uh, maybe it's something uh, of a bigger, of a bigger part. And to me, but that's Western. It looks like a keychain. Does, mm -hmm. but that's my Western opinion. <laughs> and I, oh, that should be a nice keychain, but <laughs> it probably isn't. I 
don't know what it is, so I have no idea. But, but it reminds me of bracelets. Yes. So jewelry, actually. And that's nice because then it's worn by a person and it has a special attachment for somebody or meaning for somebody. And I always like it when, for jewelry, they also use non-expensive materials. But it can be anything. Eh? It can also keep things together, group things. I have no idea, actually. Yeah, these are bracelets, and it reminds me to the uh, uh, knock and pass a bag. Uh, my father brought it from uh, Indian Jaya that time. Uh, from the same material, I think, from this kind of uh, a grass, <coughs> but it's more uh, a little different, little different uh, kind of uh, technique to tie it. Emanuele Rinaldo Meschini è eh, un storico dell'arte, è un curatore, un giovane curatore che ha lavorato eh, molto a Berlino, se non mi sbaglio, e sta facendo qui presso di noi un appunto un, 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 un progetto insomma, di cui ci parlerà che ha eh, già presentato presso di noi due installazioni di artisti che lui ha seguito che ora sentiamo Good morning everyone and uh, I'm here to talk about this project that I'm curating at the museum and uh, I'd like to start to show you some image So the project is called Declinazione di Comunità, that means declination of uh, community and uh, aims to analyze the multicultural society through the lens of uh, contemporary art and visual arts in creating a dialogue with an uh, ethno-anthropological and uh, prehistoric collection of the museum. It's, uh, Declinazione di Comunità is a six-month uh, contemporary art program and it's divided in three different uh, exhibition chapters. The main theme is the relation uh, between art and community and its various uh, manifestations uh, in the contemporary and visual art. Uh, the artists are invited to dialogue with some specific elements of the collection, creating some uh, specific new piece and a video. I started this project in Berlin when I was a resident curator at uh, Zakau got some image of the wonderful place. And um, the starting point at Zekau is a center for uh, um, uh, Kunst und Urbanistik, art, um, art and um, urbanism. And the starting point was uh, how could I engage the community? Because uh, uh, Zekau was in the middle of a public park and it was uh, really inside, uh, uh, in a district in which the, there is very uh, strong presence of the Turkish immigration. So the, the first exhibition that I presented at Zekau was a video screening uh, during which uh, I presented the video of a Turkish Berlin based artist, uh, Chan Sungu. And the video titled The Geldik, that means uh, we are come back, we are arrived. And the video uh, highlighted the history of Turkish migrant laborers in uh, Germany and it was an intergenerational project in which the elders from the first migration told their story to the new generation of uh, uh, Turkish kids. 
After that, I decided to uh, bring this project in an um, institutional space, such as the Museum Luigi uh, Figurini. And uh, the question was, uh, could we use the ethnography uh, collection to create and instigate a new uh, history based on uh, dialogue, at, um, dialogue practice? Uh, could we use the cultural heritage to um, create a... Uh, to problematize the concept of tradition itself? And what does it mean to work with the community when you display an object or an art piece inside the museum? Basically, what does it mean to work with the community when the community is not there? When you are just trying to analyze some aspect of the community? And there is, uh, um, I would like to quote uh, um, a sentence from uh, Arsh Schneider. Uh, yeah, I get it. Maybe I this is the first time that I uh, read, read aloud this uh, word, so I don't know if the pronunciation is good. Relinquishment, it's a fundamental moment of appropriation and distinguish uh, it from any form of taking possession. Relinquishment, the temporary seeding of one else, uh, else one's own disciplinary boundaries to promote understanding could therefore be a key term and a strategy to develop collaborative and dialogical, dialogical project I was, when I was reading in my mind it was better than I, <laughs> and uh, yeah that was also my starting point the idea of uh, seeing one part uh, uh, leave one part of my specialization to create a sort of um, relinquishment uh, territory in which uh, no one is uh, really at home. So that means I'm not an, anthropo uh, an anthropologist, I'm a contemporary art curator, and I arrived in this museum and uh, I found this uh, very huge and beautiful collection. And, but my point of view is what well, is was different, for example, for the most uh, of your point of view, because when I talk about the community, the, the idea that I have in mind of community is a broader idea of community. It's not only an ethnographic, an ethnographic or anthropologi anthropological community. In this first exhibition, I display the idea of digital community and virtual community. So I <clears throat> presented the video, a series of video of uh, a Finnish artist, the name is Timo Bredenberg, then I discovered that the correct pronunciation is Timo Bredenbari, and uh, I call it Bredenbari for two years. And uh, the exhibition was, the idea was to uh, uh, create a dialogue, a dialogue with some um, specific aspect and items of the collection, and display the video in a proximity of the um, of the collection. I know that maybe some of you could think that this is a bright, um, bright full example of quick fix, but in, uh, in my idea it was just a starting point. The artist could be only as uh, an initiator of a process, and the idea it was to problematize some aspect and uh, a narrative of the uh, collection. So I display different video that talking about uh, the digital community, the video games community, the interactive community, um, close to some items of the collection. And there was a video that I would like to show you uh, that it was, uh, how can I say, the most problematic one. Because this video uh, depicted the, the uh, school bullies, bullism and the violence in the school without any kind of mediation. It's just like, uh, in a certain way, brutal violence. Uh, but uh, it's not so brutal. But uh, there is a ritual inside this video. The artist uh, selected more than uh, 200 videos that he find on YouTube. And all this video was posted by the kids uh, that fighting in the school. There is a... Uh, uh, how can I say, sort of theater of fighting, because you will see in the video that the kids with the camera that uh, uh, shooting the, the kids that fighting, and there is a real ritual. So I decided to put this video uh, closer uh, to in the Pacific uh, section, in the uh, Oceania collection, close to the house of the man. Because uh, in my mind, that is not an uh, anthropological mind, I was thinking that uh, 
the school, the violence in the school could be um, could problematize the idea of the ritual and the um, violence inside the house of the man as a process to grow from kids to adult in a place that should represent a sort of uh, um, how can I say way of uh, learning and a way of teach. So I would like to show you this video because. Uh, I think that uh, when we're talking about how contemporary art could dialogue with uh, ethnographic collection and uh, anthropological museum, I think that one of the um, biggest points it could be that this dialogue is a relinquishment and uh, starting from with a problem, create a problem, because of course there is not like a temporal line between uh, the nowadays video posted on YouTube and. Uh, um, the house of the man and the ritual and the uh, process of growing uh, uh, adults. But there is this kind of uh, non-temporal line that could link contemporary art with uh, uh, the museum and the collection. And the video is called Sparta because uh, the title reveals a lot about it. Only a few minutes. with an ethnographic object. Because the question, in my point of view, is not to um, uh, retrace the history that linked together the contemporary uh, side with the ethnographic side, but it was to problematize the concept of violence and the concept of ritual. Because uh, uh, we're looking at House of the Man as a ritual violence, as a passage of uh, uh, growth. And uh, we see this video that was posted by the kids on uh, YouTube, so it was uh, with the mediation of a uh, uh, digital media, of a uh, social media. We see this video only as a brutality, as a violence, because the biggest problem that arises from these pieces, because uh, this is a dialogative process, and when you create a new dialogue, when you start a new dialogue, some problems could happen, because uh, uh, my point of view was different from the uh, point of view of the um, other curator of the museum, but it, we arrive at the end, um, I find a solution and uh, we talk a lot. So in this case, uh, the dialogue is not only between the art piece and the uh, collection, the items of the collection, but it, between, it was uh, uh, between an uh, art curator and an ethnographic curator. And uh, I think that it was really interesting and uh, uh, problematized this aspect that it was uh, really, really, um, 
interesting. And, uh, and this first exhibition lasted only uh, three weeks. Maybe it was uh, uh, even too short to present uh, uh, this uh, uh, question. But then there is a second exhibition that you can see now uh, at the museum. It is played under the arch and in the giant box uh, uh, in front of the fenster, because I don't know how to say uh, fenster in uh, uh, English, but uh, I discovered today that the fenster in German is uh, perfect, the right uh, translation of uh, Vetrata. So, I, and you will see that ex exhibition that is between the street art and the prehistoric collection of the uh, museum. And that kind of exhibition was uh, very easy, it was very simple and beautiful. And, uh, so I don't have to say anything because uh, I prefer to stress and highlight the problematic aspect. But also you have in the folder all the uh, press release and uh, all the... Um, uh, and everything about the exhibition and the street artists. So, if you have the time after your technical meeting and uh, you would like to, you want to see, uh, we could do a little tour guide. If you want, I can show you uh, in a very informal way, informal way, the uh, second exhibition. So, thanks for your attention. Thanks. <laughs>